Hey there cats and kitties, I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 10 of the anime series, Wunewa Amu, or The Great Passage, and this is very much a hunkering down episode, all because of the singular word that was missing from the template for The Great Passage. Majime has called in a ton of what I can only assume are probably students or temps to go over all of the backlog of words and, and double check everything. I mean, they're marking it with red on the first pass, blue with the second to, to double down on making sure there are no more missing words in the catalog that is meant to go into this thing. And there's over 240,000 entries. So I'm assuming this took the better part of a year uh, based on some of the dialogue, which again calls into question how much time has passed, how much time Majime has been involved in this. Um, you know, he says something about Mr. Matsumoto not looking good after the 14 years they've been, you know, doing this because he's in the hospital, uh, but his age, you know, he doesn't seem to age. He seems almost timeless and Kaguya, in a very sweet moment in this episode between she and Majime, uh, says the same about Majime and he says the same about her. Very endearing um, was to see them together again in this episode because he's spending a lot of time in the office with this new problem. But he says something about 14 years and it just uh, kind of astounds me that, oh wait, are, are they have they been working on this for 14 years? Was it 14 years ago that Majime in that first episode came aboard this, uh, you know, dictionary publishing segment of this particular company. And that's how long he's been at it. It hasn't been, as I speculated, just three years, <laughs> you know, um, because they don't look that much older, but this is an ever evolving project that with each passing day, uh, you know, with every minute, I mean, of all of those 14 years, you know, words are evolving, language is evolving, you have Mr. Matsumoto actively taking down notations on the meanings of words and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you almost have to feel like, well, they're never going to be done, you know. By the time they finalize the publishing of this particular dictionary, how much further along will language have gotten, you know. They're never going to be fully concurrent especially when they have a backlog that they have to go through because of a, just one singular word that was missing from the template. Now they have to go through all of them again. That was an executive decision made by Manjume. Very understandably so, but I mean, I have to wonder how much time they were set back in doing that, even with all the help coming in. And um, it, it was... You know, it almost had my breath caught in my throat when I found out Mr. Matsumoto had been in the hospital. I was so afraid that it answered my speculation that it was somewhat of a death knell for his character. He seemed to be doing relatively well. He was still actively doing that notation uh, thing with all different kinds of words and everything. I'm sure he stumbled upon a whole cache of, of new words and dialogue and meanings in the hospital of all places. And it did seem like his, his wife... I don't know, it, it kind of seemed like she was passively kind of resigned to the fact that, you know, everyone wants him back at work, but that might not be a realistic thing. And, and so I was somewhat apprehensive about that. Majime himself, uh, when they're all going to leave, it, it was really cool that they took the trip out to the hospital to see him. Araki, uh, Majime, and Nishioka showed up even, and um, they had some kind words with him. But when they were all on their way out, you know, Majime looks back at Mr. Matsumoto's wife, uh, who I assumed to be his wife, and she just was kind of, you know, again, that passive resignment that he's probably not long for the wind. Whatever the tests are that they're running on him, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what his, <laughs> you know, current health is. But they did say it looked like he had gotten a little thin, uh, you know, maybe a little peckish, maybe he wasn't eating well or something like that. Because of, you know, his age, uh, his body might have been in failing health. And then you kind of had the other leg drop, I think, by the end of the episode where we're seeing a house that is all but empty. And they close in on a portrait of Mr. Matsumoto and his wife. And it's just dead silent. There's no life in that house. And it makes me wonder... Were we just seeing the house before he was released from the hospital because we find out he's going to be released after Kaguya had gone and seen him? Or has this been, you know, the passage of time that it's been about a year in the course of this episode that they've been working on, you know, going through all of those words one by one again, double timing it to make sure no words are missing 
And in that span, you know, have we lost Mr. Matsumoto? I don't know. Um, I guess we'll have to wait to see where we pick up in the next episode and uh, how far along we'll have gotten for this, you know, particular dictionary, The Great Passage, to be published. And uh, it was just something of a, a disquieting, you know, somewhat worrisome episode to see how much work they now had to put into this. I mean, there were many sleepless nights. The people they brought in this team, they were being worked to the bone in, in a sense. I mean, I think they were all there of their own volition. I don't think they were like, you know, being treated like slaves to the cause, uh, but they were working tirelessly and, and whiling away the hours for what I believe, again, to be the better part of a year on this project. And there were even a few nights where, you know, they brought up, Araki brought up, hey, let's send them home. They they look beat as all hell. And even he and Majume stayed behind to continue their efforts. And I love that moment when it seems like everything is said and done. There's only like one, you know, uh, uh, docket mark left on the entire sheet they have, <laughs> you know, in the corner of the big room with everyone in it. And you have, uh, you know, Kishibe saying, okay, everything's all right on my end. You have Araki saying everything's all right on my end. And everyone is like choked and, and they're just waiting. It's palpable tension, waiting to hear Majume give, you know, the salute as well, that everything is a-okay. And they've managed to find no other missing words. And then when he finally does, it was really kind of a, a breath of fresh air to see so many people coming up to him and saying, you know, if you ever need any more help, this was actually fun. It was actually exciting. It's so satisfying to know we accomplished our goal and we found no more missing words and everything like that. It just seemed to come full circle from, you know, where we began with Majime for him to have been such a closed in shell of a person. And and now he's commanding the creation of this dictionary with all of the best of his talents and people who are so much younger than him, about the age probably when he signed on in the first place, are finding respect in him and respect for those talents and, and actually getting a kick out of the work that they've put into it alongside him, you know, and looking up to him as a, a sensei in his own right. I just thought that was really awesome. And um, so I guess we shall see. Uh, I don't believe there are too many episodes left to this season as of the time of this recording. I'm not sure of the exact number. But it'll be interesting to see if we can finally get this dictionary fully published. Uh, we saw a preview of what the cover will look like, and I thought it was really cool that a little schooner, a little ship, was shown on the cover of it. Because of all of that talk about the Great Passage, the, the visuals of, you know, in, in Majime's mind about crossing the vast ocean, and this being a ship uh, that needs to be, you know, free of holes because it might sink. And, and that whole idea of it being a communicative thing, um, the words, the dialogue, you know, all of it is a ship across the shore of communication and all that kind of stuff. And, and we see sort of the nightmarish equivalent as he's worrying and mulling about, you know, are there any other missing words in this episode? That torrential, like, interspatial rift that starts sucking all the words out of the world. He's so afraid internally about all of that dialogue, all of those meanings being wiped away. And uh, so it made it just that much more satisfying to see that when the other leg dropped, everything was A-OK, -okay, and we can now proceed further again, you know, onward and upward for the publishing of the Great Passage, and it'll be good to see it come to its fruition. Whether or not Mr. Matsumoto is there to see it, as long as the rest of the family who's been working on this can say with satisfaction, it is complete, and uh, it would be nice if they threw in a little dedication to him as well, whether he's alive or not, <laughs> by the final episode. And so yeah, uh, otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.